Welcome to this exciting program. We have Miriam with us from Belgium. And they're seeing amazing things happening in Belgium right now. Our eighth generation with family is now getting safe. They're getting baptized in water. They're getting set free from demons. And a lot of things is happening in Belgium. It's also happening in Holland. It's happening in Canada. And you're going to hear some testimony from different places in this program. So welcome. You will not miss this. Yeah, and we are back again, and we have Miriam with us, Miriam from Belgium. Yeah, hi. Uh, it's so good to have you here. It's great to be here. And last time I saw you, it was at the seminary in Holland. Yes, exactly. And when was that? It was last year, 2014, October. Yeah, and you came home to Belgium, and a lot of things have happened in Belgium since. Yeah. Yes. And we want to hear what happened in Holland, and we want to hear what have happened in Belgium since. Mm -hmm. Before I want to tell a little about Canada, we have been in Canada the last two weeks. And it's just been amazing. We uh, saw 40 people baptized in two weeks. And we have a lot of testimony we want to share with you also later on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, one of the things I have shared was a guy who was deaf on one ear. He was not able to hear for 60 years. Wow. He got a bamboo something in his ear and uh, the drum broken and he could not hear for 60 years and he got healed wow. at one meeting and can hear again and also we there was a girl who got set free from demons in baptism and i know you have seen that baptism is really strong you yes. learned that in holland yeah yeah definitely uh, and you have seen that in uh, belgium and i want to start with uh, showing this testimony this is a testimony from canada where you see this young girl who was tormented by demons the whole of her life but she got baptized that day, she got delivered from demons, and she got a totally new life, and she's on fire today. So welcome to see this short clip. Do you feel a fight? Yeah. Uh. So as, for as long as I can remember, I've been so tormented by demons, and just tormented in general. Like, I've been angry since I was a kid, like just complete rage, and um, depression, suicide, all this stuff, and like rejection. And today I uh, got baptized. When I originally got, went into the water, it was really like this battle going on inside me and I didn't want to like go down. Uh, and guys, I want to let you know, but this is sometimes what all happened. There's a fight now. Inside of her, there is something. She feels sick. She feels something is moving inside of her. Why? Because Satan don't like this. Demon don't like this. It's like a cat don't like to get wet. They don't like this. And they're fighting against it. But this is the power. And we need to go the whole way and preach the gospel and so on. Are you ready? Come here. It, like, as they were going to baptize me, I actually felt like someone was holding me up. But when I went down in the water... Due to Jesus Christ right now. Make sure to come down and up. Whoa, Sheila Badadada. Freedom, go, 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 go. I came back up and I guess I went through some deliverance because... Amazing things happen. But that I guess I command if you leave it. Come out. Come out. Go, 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 go. I command every lie. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Let it go. Freedom. 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 Come out. If you lie. If you lie. If you lie. If you lie. Go right now in the name of Jesus. I command every lie. Says and you're out. You are over. Go. Go. Freedom. 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 Every unclean spirit. Come out. Come out. Come out. Fill up. Holy Spirit. Fill up. More. 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 Fill up. Oh, yes. Go. How was it? <laughs> I'm feeling amazing right now. Like, for the first time, as long as I can remember, I have complete calmness and peace. I have no anger. And, uh, like, I'm not depressed for the first time. Like, um, I also, every day, I walked into a room and would felt so much rejection. And, like, God delivered me from that, too, from someone hugging me and telling, like, Torben hugged me and told me, like, God loved me and all this stuff, and God, did, like, radically delivered me from, like, rejection, and I feel amazing. I'm so excited to pursue Jesus in a relationship with him in fullness. So, so this is what God is doing today, and this girl got set free, and we see the power in the gospel here. 
Satan, he is alive, he's real, he's tried to destroy people's life, but Jesus is so much greater. Absolutely. And you have seen that. I've seen that, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You have seen the power of God. Yeah. First, what happened in Holland? Because, because you came from Belgium to Holland to a seminary. Yes. Um, yeah, before I came, um, God has already pre prepared my heart. The Holy Spirit did his work, but I was looking for a direction. And I knew that what I read in the Bible was real, but I didn't see it uh, in that way in around me. And I came there in Holland and I, actually I just wanted to speak in tongues and I couldn't do that. And yeah, you talked about it and I was so full. I came there with a group. We were all full of everything that we heard there. And um, at that moment, you you said, yeah, just you divided us in groups, go outside, go for kickstarting. And I just couldn't move. At that moment, I couldn't move. And I, there was a battle between me and God. And I said to God, I refuse to go outside. I cannot go and approach people. I first need to get baptized in with the Holy Spirit. I felt it. I know it's there, but somehow it just doesn't come out. What's wrong with me? And then, yeah, I talked with you, Torben, and then you prayed with, with me, but it just didn't come out. And we had a battle there, and you said to me, it's in there. And I said, no, it's not there. I don't have it. You have it. I don't have it. And it was, a, yeah, a discussion. And then you just said to me, just go outside relax and and let it let it over yeah, because to God. i prayed for you and i felt it was already there yeah yeah exactly but, and 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 you yeah and you didn't you could couldn't get it out that's right yeah, yeah. and yeah. we had a battle you say we had a battle okay <laughs> and then i got outside with uh, the kickstarting group yeah. and uh, there was a woman there who um who had also was filled with fear she couldn't approach people and she asked for prayer and we just made a circle there with our seven the seven members of of that group and we started to pray for her three times nothing changed the fear was still there and at the end when it was my turn to pray i felt like i i didn't know what was going to happen but but somehow it was like god gave me the right words for that woman and as soon as i spoke these words she started to breathe yeah very heavy and 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 she, it just came out of her and she started to speak in tongues it jumped upon me i start for the first time um in 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 yeah a period of two months i think i start to to speak in tongues again i did it in belgium once but it, somehow it disappeared and the devil with his lies came and and yeah he made me believe like it wasn't real but at that moment in holland on the street we were just there in the middle of the street it jumped jumped upon me i started to speak it was so powerful and then the whole group was just standing there and praising god and speaking in tongues and that was really powerful it was great and that's how i would start and yeah, yeah. when i came back you saw that and, it was and great. I, I remember like you said like two months ago you got the holy spirit then you started to speak but something was blockering yeah. there was no breakthrough yeah i believe maybe the breakthrough is somehow our mind yes we have to understand it then you came to me and said, I want the Holy Spirit. Yes. I pray for you. And I say, hey, you got it already. No, yes, no, yes, no, <laughs> yes, you have it. But, but I don't speak, just speak. No, I cannot, <laughs> just speak. No, I cannot, just speak. No, I cannot. And we start to argue. That's exactly And, and then I said to you, come on, okay. And I was thinking, oh, okay. I know it's there. So sometimes we just have to focus on something else, focus mm -hmm. on Jesus, just relax, and then it's coming. Mm -hmm. And I said, go out on the street and see what happened. And you didn't like that. Yeah. But you went out and it and happened. It came. Yeah. I love it. It was great. And you came home and now you had it and you were on fire. Yes. But Holland was amazing. Holland was Do really amazing. Do you remember amazing. what happened? Otherwise? Yeah. Like, how I always explain it, it was like heaven and hell burst open and everything happened in that room. And we were like shopping here, a deliverance. Okay, we take part of that. Then we go to the next group and we were yeah. just busy the whole day. And yeah. to me, it was really a breakthrough. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Many people got so free from demons. Yes. And, lot of things happened. and it's still growing in Holland. Uh, I just, just a few days ago, three, four days ago, I got an email from the pastor. In, in Holland, and uh, if I can find it here, he wrote this to me. Looking back at last October, we still see fruit of your ministry with us. 
One of the person who visited the conference was actually not really walking with God. He, ho- uh, he however, was surprised of what he heard and saw. And I think many people was mm-hmm. that. After you and your team left, he decided to go on the street every two weeks. The first time they went, he got to pray for a lady who sat in a wheelchair for 10 years. Even though he was so scared, scared he said a quick prayer, not really believing something would happen. But God touched this lady and she started running around in the marketplace for a half hour wow. and now he is even more on fire. And this is what God is doing today. Like we were there, we did the training, something happened. But when we left a few weeks later, this woman got yeah. out of a wheelchair and running around. Great. And, and, and he continued that this guy there, he have actually started now giving training session himself to help other people become active. And then he ended up, I wonder if you have opportunity to do a kickstart seminary again <laughs> this year. And this is what I like. I like that things are growing. Mm-hmm. We saw it in Holland. You got the Holy Spirit. A lot of things happened. But it did not only happen when we were there. When we came home, it continued in Holland. Exactly. But it also continued in your life. Yes. yes. Because when you came home with a new faith, with the Holy Spirit, with, um, with have seen deliverance, baptism, water, Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. what happened when you came home then? Yeah, I, I was just full. Uh, I wasn't there alone. I was with five of my friends, five of the members of the group, and we were all on fire. We knew that was real, and, and uh, my friends, uh, I think three or four of them, also got baptized uh, in water and Holy Spirit, and we were just so happy. Uh, we also went on the street and, and saw lots of healings. Uh, we got just uh, requests from, from people that we didn't know. It was like... God put them on our path and we went there, we prayed for them, we explained the gospel, we baptized them in water with the Holy Spirit and it just came out like 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 that. It was just great. That was a very powerful part that we experienced. Before that, we heard about it, about it we read about it, but in my life, it wasn't that active. Like deliverance, I only did it twice, but not that active as, as I'm yeah. doing it right now. Yeah. So. so, so and, and for you, you, you have been in Belgium many years and it was not so much part of what you did. Then you went to Holland and you saw it. You came home to Belgium and you continued doing it. Was the Holy Spirit the same in Belgium than it was in Holland? I think the Holy Spirit is everywhere the same. It is the same. It is yeah. the same, definitely, but it just... But what happened with you in Holland? It was not because you got a new anointing, because you already got the Holy Spirit, but you just got a understanding. A renewing of the mind. A renewing of the mind. Yeah. And then you started to step out in it. Yes. And, and how was it in the beginning to see it through your hands? Like now you saw the healing, now you baptize yourself. Now you saw people get set free from demons. How was it to experience that? It was great. It was just uh, very practical. And everything that that you hear from leaders of the church, like you are a woman, you are not allowed to do that, or, or uh, only strong men or men with knowledge can do that, those were all lies. And it's mm. just it's the kingdom of God is just at hand. And everyone who believes, it's just your belief. If you just step into it and go for it, then God comes confirm that yeah. and then do does amazing things yeah. Yeah. and i want, want to say but this reformation what god is doing is spreading all over the world and, yeah. and here we have an example we came to holland to do like a seminary you came from belgium to holland you took the fire of god went home to belgium and you start to give it to other people and and both Uh, people from outside church who got saved, born again, but also church people. And, and you're going to see a video here with David, one of me and friends. And, and David, he has seen things before, but he has not seen it in Belgium this way. But God is the same, no matter if in Holland, it's in Belgium, it's in Denmark. God is the same. And, and this can be an everyday life for us. So listen to David's testimony here. I was, I was born again when I was like six years old. Then uh, I gave my life to Christ 
When I was 11 or 12 years old, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when I was 18 years old, uh, I was baptized in water. And some years back, like six, seven years ago, I joined a little group and they were also into discipling, they were also into healing and uh, praying for deliverance. But back there, my, um, really my experience was they could be teaching and preaching about healing and even they do, could do a big healing meeting with a lot of people that were invited. But at the end of the night, there was not one person that would come forward and that would testify of a healing that they personally received. So for me, it was like, what is going on? Is the, is the gospel powerful or is it just talk? Ten months ago, I came in contact with uh, Miriam and with the group that uh, some of them, they have gone to uh, Holland to this kickstart uh, weekend. And they came back with uh, testimonies of the power of God, the things God had done. So for me, it was so refreshing and I became part of this group. And for me, it was refreshing to see miracles happening, legs growing, uh, um, people with back problems healed, uh, people with demons delivered. We saw so many deliverances and healings and it just happened. It was not a big show and, try and a big teaching. It was just uh, the people, they did it. So what we now have is really, I feel it's a family. We have a family, the group is like a family. We know each other uh, good and well, and we are there for each other. We see each other also a lot. And um, all of them are ready to pray for people. Everybody is ready to, to go and, and to pray for somebody that has a need, or um, to pray for deliverance, or to, they're not afraid to pray in tongues and, and just uh, have, they're really this, we have this soldier mentality that we're soldiers of the gospel and everybody is ready to, to go for it. So, but this last 10 months, I've really seen, we, we can really trust the word of God, it's true. It is reality, it works, and we just have to be obedient to the word of God and we will see the results. And it was David and Mia, we want to hear more about what, what is happening in Belgium. What, what have you seen? Well, what, our, what we see is that we got a lot of requests from people that we don't know, just people who uh, have seen the videos of the last reformation and somehow they yeah, sent emails to, to, to you in Denmark. And we got some uh, emails from people who live in, in Belgium and ask for, for prayer and deliverance and you send it to us and we just visit those people and we see how God w works there. Um, we've seen people uh, set free from demons, uh, they got deli delivered from demons, we see people get healed, we baptize people, baptize with the Holy Spirit in water, it just, uh, it's growing, yeah. yeah. And I love the, the, work, uh, the way we work together, like we get an email and, to, yeah. <laughs> and we send to you and then we hear testimonies and yeah. I know just last weekend you also baptized a few people and yes so but there was a whole family a special family can you tell about that yeah um, it was actually uh, I think in 2000, 2015 begin January this year that we uh, had a call from a woman uh, a woman who was the granddaughter of uh, yeah a witch in in that town a generation of witches and she was so attacked by demons, uh, her total life uh, was just blocked. Uh, a woman who had a lot, a list of sickness, uh, illness, and, and just the demons attacked her. Uh, she was so paralyzed sometimes. They, uh, when she was in her bed, they lifted her up. They, the demons throw with things. Uh, whenever she cleaned the windows or uh, the mirrors, then it just, immediately get get dirty again uh, with puke mm. and and she heard voices in her house it was really like like hell for mm. her and then yeah we went there with uh with with our team with well, what, what do you think before you went there when you get an email like eight generation witnesses and all of that story is what do you think like yeah we just go for it yeah, it, it wasn't an email, it was a phone call okay, to phone one call. of our members. He, yeah. he knew her, he uh, already prayed several years before okay. for her. And she just had his number and she called in her, yeah, in her chaos, she called him. Okay. Uh, and we were like, let's just go. 
let's okay. let's let's see. You're we, we ready believe. For it. Yeah, 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 let's do but it. But when he prayed for many years before, nothing has happened or what? Some things did happen, but they didn't saw each other uh, many okay. years. And okay. then she remembered I that guy that once guy. prayed for me. Yeah. I still have his number and it's getting worse and worse. So I need to call him. And somehow yeah. it was like God gave her that that voice. Uh, yeah. yeah, and she did it, and now she's delivered. Yeah, yeah. What, what happened? You you went there and... We went there, and actually, uh, we just... When we were there, we just saw the demons manifest, yeah. manifesting. And how, how did you see that? Hi. By, yeah, sh she started to puke. They started to... Um, she couldn't breathe. She had a headache, uh, and she was, like, screaming and, and loss of pain. And the demons were attacking her body. And you can see it, yeah, her physical um, situation was, yeah. went, wasn't well, but we just continue. We were there. We believed that, that uh, they, the demons did everything to, to, um, to stop us. But yeah. we knew, yeah, it, it, it's like a new anointing that God gives us. You can separate uh, the spirit and you can really look into the spiritual world when you, yeah, um, yeah the Holy, Holy Spirit just showed us what to do we we went there with faith and we prayed and whenever we prayed we saw that new things were happening to her body um, and it wasn't just a uh, loss of demons went away she got delivered from a lot of demons but they still attacked her because we didn't baptize her mm. at that moment and uh, later on we we kept going there because it's not just visit them once we really take our time to listen to their story to explain the gospel when we have an opportunity like this where you are invited to a person's house yeah. then don't be too fast just pray and go out of there because mm -hmm. we want to lay a foundation yeah. yes. we want to see exactly. people soundly safe repent best yeah. of our holy spirit yeah. because otherwise we pray and we go away and mm -hmm. we come back later or yeah. because they don't turn away from that yeah, I believe so. that we really have to go deeper and it's yeah. about the soul and it's about the repentance and repentance is not just something that a prayer you you repeat after someone and you leave it's mm. it goes deeper it's a, it's it's a process of of yeah holiness and mm. and that's very important and we explain that what what it means and uh, when people really do that from the heart and and you just keep follow following them then you see their life changing mm. they don't do stuff that they used to do before mm. and and the holy spirit just con convince them to yeah, it, yeah god is really working yeah. in their life and that's important to yeah, us it's the power in the gospel yeah. yes. what, what happened then what what happened with her what happened with her yeah she um she believed she accepted Jesus. Uh, she believed everything we said about the gospel. We just sat there really with the Bible. Look, this is what it say, what it says here. Uh, you are so bounded by, by, we believe you are bounded by um, yeah, demons. Uh, we believe they have the right to be here. But if you want, we can close the door. If you believe, like, look what the Bible is saying about this. We want to go the whole process with you. We did that with her. She accepted Jesus and things started to change in her life. And her sister wa was like, hey, you look so different. What happened? Mm. And she explained that. And her sister was so interesting. So the next time we, we went to her, uh, her sister was there also. And she brought her daughter. And the next time, the son of that woman was also there. And mm. yeah, the... The friend, she saw also difference and she came the next time we came and we were just sitting there with six new people wow. and all of them accepted Jesus. All of them yeah. were just, yeah, family of a generation, which is yeah. all attacked in their own houses, attacked by demons and they all get baptized in yeah. water. Um, I think the five of the six we baptized, they all speak now in, in tongues yeah. and they are real warriors now whenever we go somewhere uh, for a deliverance. Some of them come with us. We meet every Friday in the evening, just our group, and then we come together, we praise God, we pray for each other and we just go out when, when we have new requests. So in requests. eight generation, they have been serving Satan and now that had been broken and now they belong to yes, Jesus Christ yes. and the whole family is serving God. Yes, and we saw oh, yeah. it's it, it's not like they just 
came to a program, they see healings, the, their legs, all of them, their legs grow, the hands, the, um, that woman that I talked about, the first one who came to Jesus, there was this big difference between her hands. When she did like that, we just saw that the one hand was just too short mm. and we prayed for that and we all saw it all the whole family mm. saw that it was growing they saw the legs growing and that woman had also a tumor in her throat mm. and she, when she went to the doctor to one of the one of the biggest cities I think uh, mm. around that area that she lived and the doctor was just shocked and the doctor said to her it's all gone I don't see anything here mm. so her, her cancer in the throat uh, went away the legs were growing her hands were growing she was delivered no attacks mm. anymore and they all saw that and they saw the difference between darkness yeah. and light and they're mm. now they stepped into the light and it's great they're so full of it we have a video with one of them who's getting baptized. Who's this? It's a girl that's the niece of the first woman we went there. Yeah. The niece is it's a girl uh, of 18 years old. Yeah. And she was also there, uh, I think, the second time we went there. And she saw the miracles that happened that day. She saw the difference. She heard the words. And she decided, I just want to follow Jesus. I don't yeah. want this darkness anymore. I don't want the attacks of the devil anymore. I just want Jesus. And yeah, she, she repented and uh, we baptized her in April this year. Yeah. And yeah, we baptized her as soon as she came out of the water. She just started to speak in tongues and yeah. now she's so excited. She wants to go on the street and yeah, she can't wait to meet us every week. <laughs> yeah, amazing. So this is how it's growing. And it was some of the things I talked about also when we were in Holland was to find a person of peace. Yes to go out, look chapter 10, to find that person that can open the door to the next yes. person that can open the door. Yeah. And this is what you're seeing. Exactly. That the first woman uh, who called us, she was really the person of peace. When her life changed, the, the life of the whole family changed because they saw the difference. They saw that Jesus was real. They saw that, that something happened to that woman that they didn't see before. And she was our person of peace at that moment. Yeah. And now, yeah, they're all doing their, their work and they talk about God. The girl, she tol talks at school about God and she also sees a lot of uh, friends who are now against her, but, but she doesn't care. She, she has this goal, Jesus is, is real and I'm just going for it. Now you pray for her and she starts to speak in tongues and it's so clear to see. Um, how is it? for you to just baptize and do that now is it's, it's a normal thing. Yeah, it? now it's very normal, <laughs> normal yeah. yeah. But first time it was, if you go back one year, you are not imagining two years that you should do it. Uh, no, no I, I, I think what happened in Holland is it gave me a direction. I knew before that uh, the gospel was real, but I didn't see it in my, in my yeah, area uh, yeah. where I lived. I didn't see it in, in on that uh, way. Yeah. And when I saw it in, in uh, Holland, it was like, okay, yeah, this is exactly what we read in the Bible and we just go for it and we'll do it and we trust with faith and we'll see what God will do. Yeah. And it's amazing now, it's just a part of my life. It doesn't matter where I am. I uh, look everywhere for water, where is a place here where I can, where yeah. I can baptize someone yeah. and yeah. Yeah, so, sometimes they laugh about that. <laughs> and last time, uh, last time you baptized somebody in water, Holy Spirit was yesterday. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was Be here. Because yesterday he had the Jesus Hotel. Uh, I was uh, working with some practical things, and then I suddenly re read on Facebook that a guy had got baptized in water and Holy Spirit, and I didn't know that. Uh, so you were out on the street, and he was there and with you, and and he came home, and he got baptized yesterday. And God said, free from demons. Yes. I think we have a little clip we can just show you uh, where you can see a little clip of him. It was yesterday. Yes, only so, yesterday. So for you, it's normal now. Yeah. And here you can see how he get baptized in water and speaking tongues. And I love it. And I want to say that I, I met him. I met this young guy yesterday. Uh, after I read on Facebook and said, hey, I just heard what happened with you. I read on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> how, how was it? And then he looked at me and said, 
it was not what I expected. And then he was like, I didn't expect anything to happen. <laughs> but suddenly something came over yeah. me and I felt a battle in me yeah. and I got delivered and I spoke in tongues. Yeah, it was great. So, so yeah. it, it is an everyday life. Yes. Uh, but I know you have also experienced opposition. Yeah. One of the things also because you are a woman and because of tradition and you are not a priest and you have not been studying. Can you tell about some of all the opposition that happened? I know we started already uh, after you came home from Holland. Uh, yes, um, I hear a lot of things. I hear people say, uh, people from the church always say says to me say to me like you are a woman, you are not allowed to do that, or you first have to ask permission. There's a whole system. You cannot just go outside and and whatever you want, baptize someone. Some people just say it's a symbol and then I come there, no, it's not a symbol. I've seen demons, uh, mm. I've seen people set free. I've seen demons manifested. It's just so powerful. It's not just a symbol. And yeah, uh, we just don't have the same um, mind yeah. anymore. Yeah. And I am like a scandal to some of my yeah. family or friends. It's just people who were closest to me they think that I'm really on the wrong road and uh, that I that I shouldn't do that, that it's not biblical. Yeah, um, yeah I, that's the the other side, but, but the that, other that, part of it. If we start to look at uh, this life that's getting changed, people are getting set free from demons, people are getting born again, life are getting changed. Um, it's like Jesus when he healed a blind guy. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing that that blind guy had just got healed. The Pharisees, they saw you're doing on the Sabbath. It's wrong. You're not allowed to heal on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They were f more focused on doing it the correct way yeah. than seeing the kingdom of God is growing. Yes. And it's the same today. Instead of seeing, come on, let's back down up here and say, those people, are they getting delivered? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do God give them the Holy Spirit when you pray for them? Yeah, okay. If God don't want to use a woman, Mm -hmm. If God don't want to use you, why do God then give them the Holy Spirit when you lay the hands on them? Yeah, exactly. But some so. people just don't believe that. Some people say it's not from the Holy Spirit and uh, yeah. they can say whatever they want. I, but I think it just doesn't fit in their minds, yeah, in the their tradition. system or the culture. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. But we need, we need to set people free because yeah. if every member, every member, the Bible says every member, of the body. Mm -hmm. Every member is part of the body and everybody is called to work. And we're not going to see a reformation and revival before everybody works. Mm -hmm. yeah. But how is the opposition? Because it has been hard. It is sometimes or, very hard because uh, yeah, you hear, hear things from people that you didn't uh, expect to hear negative things about, uh, about you. But it's, yeah, you learn. People like, who were close to you before. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. But it's just also a lesson you learn. The, the closer you are to God, I think, yeah. the harder it is yeah. and the scandalous it is. And it just, I think we need, um, just like I needed a change of mind, mindset, I think those people need it too. And they're sometimes, some of them are just stuck in, in culture and in system. And if those walls, are broken, I think amazing things will happen. Yeah. I want to say to, to people out there, we, we believe that this is the word of God and we believe that every word is true and this is for today. So when you talk about these signs, follow those who believe, cast out demons mm -hmm. in my name. Yes. It, it don't, do not only follow man or do not follow woman, it follow those who believe, yes. man or woman, cast out demons. Talk about healing sick, speaking tongues. Jesus has said, go out and make disciples. We know all of mm -hmm. that. But Jesus is also talking about, don't think I came with peace but strife. From yes. now on, there's going to be a division between yes. a girl and her mother, son and her, his father, and mm -hmm. so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So there will always be a division mm -hmm. when we start to step out on this. Yes. And it's so interesting because also, I know some of the opposition you have experienced had to do with baptism. Yes. <laughs> you are allowed to go to meeting, you are allowed to pray, you are allowed to talk about Jesus, you are allowed to pray and read the Bible. As long as you don't baptize. <laughs> what, what can you tell about that? 
Yeah, when we came to uh, the, the seminar in Holland with, with my friends, uh, it was okay for the parents because our group, we have some young people in it, uh, people between uh, 20, 25. Um, four, of the, four of my friends who came with me decided on your seminar to, to get baptized in water. And they did, and I s uh, spoke in tongues. When the parents heard that, they were very mad. Mm. And they just, um, yeah, they, they, they stopped their uh, children. They for, forbid them to come. Mm. And some of them uh, just stopped to come. Yeah. We, don't, we hear them sometimes, but they are just, because they live uh, with their parents, they're not allowed to come anymore. And, and they look at, the, they came in church before or what? They Some went to church every Sunday. They were baptized as uh, children, okay. yeah, as babies. Mm. And that's what counts for their mm. parents. And the new baptism, like, uh, yeah. that, that's something yeah. too much for so, them. So here we have people who believe they're Christian. I don't know them, so I cannot say how much. They believe they're Christian. They come in church every Sunday. Of course, as a believer, you want your kids to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then those kids go out, get an encounter with God, experience Jesus, experience the Holy Spirit, get baptized more, speaking tongues, come home on fire for Jesus. And that scares them. Yeah. <laughs> it's something new that they don't know no. that. They've never seen yeah. that. And they're looking for assurance. And assurance is what they had uh, yeah. all those years. Yeah. Just go to the church, sit there, listen to the uh, the one who's speaking there and that's it just go back home yeah. and go yeah. on with your life yeah. and now they saw the heart and the mind of, of their children are changing and that's something new maybe we cannot control that I don't know what's going in their mind but ju they just didn't want that anymore and that's uh, what happened I want to say that opposition strive problems is part of the kingdom yes. of God. It's yes. what Jesus has promised us. Yes. He has promised us this life. And I want to say to people out there, do you not experience opposition? Something is wrong. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Something is wrong. But what, what Mia is experience should be the norm for us. Because as soon as we step out, preach the gospel, as the Bible says, and do what we have called to do, we will experience yes. opposition. And, and it's so clear. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to get opposition to mm -hmm. disappear. So if, if you, I can give you a, a good advice, I don't know if it's good, but I give you advice. If you want all of this opposition to disappear, just do one thing, compromise. I just, won't. just compromise. Just say, okay, we don't baptize people anymore. Yeah. We we don't talk about baptism. We we take baptism, yeah. and and of course we don't also talk about the Holy Spirit because people get fed. And of course we don't talk about demons because there's people who don't like this. And and of course we don't talk about healing because people don't like <laughs> this. And we're not too radical in the word. And mm -hmm. just compromise. I cannot do that. I will never do that. No, but sad enough, there is yeah. many people who have that choice yes. and have chosen to compromise yeah. Yeah. for the sake of peace. Yeah. We are not called to live a life in peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, peace in our spirit, yeah. peace with God, but there's going to be problems yeah. around us because it's a spiritual war, mm -hmm. war we are in. Yes, and you cannot compromise. No, no it's no. it just the Holy Spirit is in there. And even if you would try, it just doesn't work. No. And the freedom that you have received from God, people will try to take that away from you. But I, I cannot do that. It's everything that I believe in. And if you take that away, I have no reason to live. So you is growing in Belgium? It's growing, yeah. And uh, I'm, you have invited me to come to Belgium. I've um, said yes, so soon we will come to Belgium. And it's on tape, so you have tape. to go. <laughs> so soon we will come to Belgium and, and we will connect people there and, and see something amazing grow in Belgium. And I want to say to you out there from Belgium who see this, if you want contact with me, you can just write to the lastreformation.com. You can also find information on the website and contact her directly and, and we want to work together like, and mm -hmm. I love it like people write to us and we send them to you mm -hmm. and you baptize them and set them free and they grow and they grow and, and this is how it should be. 
Mia, what do you want to say to people out there who is seeing this program? Just look in the camera and just speak to them. Yeah, what I want to say is that uh, I believe there is only one God, and that God is, is um, the God of Jacob, Isaac, uh, Abraham. Uh, it's the other way around, but it's not just believing in anything. It's believing in God, the only God, the true God, uh, and believing in Jesus. And lots of people talk about the Antichrist, and they don't say anything about the anti-God because everyone believes in, in something, everyone believes in a God, whatever that God might be. But there is one person, it's Jesus, and he who has the Son has life. And if you experience that life, it's just so important. Just seek that. If you have that, you have everything. And I cannot boost on, on something I, I have nothing to boost on. I, I'm not rich, I don't have, I actually have nothing. The only assurance that I have is just Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have everything. That's my treasure. And yeah, just seek that. That's very important to me. Amen. So this is the word of God. This is the Bible. This is, we believe in one true God. The God we read about from the beginning to the end. There is no Old Testament and New Testament God. There is only one God and His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is life. And yes. everything we read about here, especially in the book of Acts, where we see how the Holy Spirit is working in the believer's life, is the same today. Yes. We exactly. are writing the book of Acts today. You are writing the book of Acts today. I want to say you don't have to be a priest. Uh, you can be a woman, you can be a child, you can be an old man. You, it don't matter who you are. It matter that you have decided to follow Jesus, to obey his word. And when you step out of it and start to do it, you're going to see amazing things. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Amazing. God bless you and see more videos uh, like this if you want on the lastreformation.com. And see you next time. Bye-bye.